Try again. Now I'm going to talk normally again. And we're going to talk normally together. Aww. Wow. What a difference. The Talkbuster Podcast. Hi, I'm Chris Chipman. You may remember me from such podcasts as the Chipman Brothers Tangent and Creating Geeks, a parenting podcast of great responsibility. I'm here to bring you back to the late 90s, early 2000s. A time of AMRAs and clamshells. A time of late fees and VHS tapes being replaced by DVDs. A time of stale gumballs and overpriced candy. Yes, that's right. I am talking about the time of blockbuster video. The Walmart of the video rental industry. The mom and pop video store killer. The corporate big choice video store that everybody loved to hate. Blockbuster is mostly gone now. Kids today will never know the crazy Friday and Saturday nights with lines wrapped around the store to rent the next big movie. No more will regulars, who are in the know, arrive at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays to snatch up the new rentals that week before the weekend rush. Most of all, no longer will young movie geeks like myself have the memories I, and many others like me, made while working there. You see, under all of the corporate evil and bad practices, Blockbuster was a home, a comfort a place where I made lifelong friends and even met my wife. It is because of these memories that I, and I'm sure many of you, have that the Talkbuster podcast was created, a place for me and others to share our memories of what once was, of the before time, of the long, long ago. I'm looking forward to see where this goes, how it evolves. Join me, won't you? Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Talkbuster podcast, the only podcast where you can still hear about Blockbuster Video on the internet. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm joined today by a very special guest. You've heard me talk about this guy before. Um, Pretty much everyone I've had on that have been people that I've worked with have all talked about this guy. Um, This is, and I mean it, and I'm giving him a cheers right now while I talk to him. Cheers, man. The best boss I've ever had in my life. Um, And he became my boss in the year 2000. Very, very, very long time ago. Um, Wow, what a difference. Yes. Wow, what a difference. Blockbuster video. Blockbuster video. Um, This is uh, Scott. So, Scott, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Scott, and I used to be a manager for Blockbuster probably back in the 2000s, early 2000s. At the height of DVD coming out, it was exploding, lines on a Friday night. It was fantastic. You know, Just people talking about movies with everyday people. It was... It was such a great time. You know what's really cool? Um, you, you talk about the lines, and we talk about those a lot. I was just talking to the people at Blockbuster Bend, the folks out in Oregon, which is the last one on the planet, and they still get 90 to 110 copies of new movies and still have lines out the door. And wow, that cracks me up. They're still bringing in that Yeah, amount. Bumblebee. They said they had 120 copies of Bumblebee. Why not? I think why it's not? awesome. Yeah, why not? And, and the crazy thing is the manager there, remember, we used to get the shipments, and that was a big enough pain. You know, oh, we didn't get enough of a movie. She has to go around to all the local WalMarts and Best Buys and buy them because they have no inventory. Well, there's still a niche for it. If you yeah. think, if you still, if you think about it, there's still a niche because how many times do you sit around with your family or friends and you're talking about the movies that are coming out, and you can have all this list of movies in your head that you want to talk, you want to go see. You're like, that would be fantastic in the theater. I'm going to spend my money and go see that. But then for some reason, life, you just don't get to see it. Right. To be able to walk in because you can't get those new movies the day they come out, like sometimes via Netflix or Amazon or Redbox, however, however you stream, you can't get it. So there's still a niche for it. Absolutely, and I I wouldn't be surprised if with um Captain Marvel, I don't know if you've seen it yet. Oh, but it's fantastic. Yeah, wasn't it? And she falls into a blockbuster and like you know I yeah. have I have kids that like people will send me messages going oh that's really cool you're talking about that thing in Captain Marvel and I'm like this is the only way they know about oh, it. Oh, I was like a little kid when I saw that yeah, scene happen. Me and too. It's exploding and I'm like holy shit did I just see a blockbuster logo and I the hands went up. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple pop up. I Why wouldn't not? be surprised if someone tries to make it come back. I don't know. Hey, you know what? I've been in retail a long time, but if Say I hit on a scratch ticket or something like that, and it was some, you know, just not crazy amount of money, but a lot of money. There's a chance that I'm getting people that I know together, and we're gonna run a blockbuster. <laughs> like it, it would, it'd be fun. Think about wouldn't it. Wouldn't it be? Just cool? everyone wants to go to work and have a good time and enjoy what they're doing every day. And why not? You're talking about music and movies all day. That wouldn't it be cool? If you know, like 
all these like groups of friends do you know like a, a trip together or something you know where everyone oh we're gonna go back to uh some place that meant something to us or you know this wouldn't it be cool <laughs> to get as many of us as we could together and just fly out there and work there for an afternoon they literally told me if i showed up they'd let me work how far are they from portland not far, two, three hours. So we could head out there and maybe see a Boston sports team on the road, maybe the oh, Celtics yeah. in Portland, Oregon. Hey, why not? Or a concert. Make make it a weekend. Make it a weekend. Bring yeah. everybody. Bring the families. Why would you not want to go see music that comes from that part of the country? Right? Absolutely. Any oh, band yeah. you go to see. <laughs> right. I just They seem like really cool people. And here I'm dating myself, talking about the 90s. The 90s. Yeah, God, you're dating I, both I digress. Of us. I digress. No, you're dating both of us. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Um, so, yeah, th- that brings in, and so Scott and I, um, how old are you, Scott? I turned the big four zero last year. Only last year? See, I yeah. always, I don't know why, but in my mind, you were more than five years older than me, and I don't know why. Uh, could be the no hair. No, no, like, it was yeah. because I was a 17-year-old kid starting at a Blockbuster yeah, in the year didn't, 2000. Yeah, but you didn't act like a 17-year-old, No, you were no I acted like a 12-year-old. I could give you more stuff to do. Yeah, but, yeah, joking around. Just no. guys being guys. No, but, um, you know, to me, you know, you, Michelle, Steve, Jeremy, my brother, you're like, yeah. this is like 10, 15 year older than me people because they have jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm, but anyway. When in reality, we weren't that no. far apart in age. No. If you think about the amount of people you know within five years that you get along with right it's, it's pretty ridiculous right yeah. um so anyway uh you know i figured you guys have heard me talk about blockbuster a lot and we're gonna talk we'll, we'll we'll rehash some things because they'll be really cool from scott's perspective but i figured you know um scott's a guy that i, I know i've talked to you about this before but i don't really know about your life um revolving around blockbuster like leading up to it and you you had a couple cool things you told me before we even started recording Oh, ah, yeah. No, my, so my first let's... memories of Blockbuster is, so I grew up in North Reading, um, not that far from where my grandparents lived in Stoneham. And so if my parents dropped my brother and I off for the weekend or a night or something with my grandparents, my grandfather and me and my brother used to walk to the Blockbuster in Stoneham that literally was like three minutes away. It was and a we'd perfect go, location we'd for We'd go a pick out movies to watch that weekend. I mean, to be able to, as a kid, be allowed to pick out a movie to watch at whatever age, and you always went above like you probably what you should have been watching because you were with your grandparents. What what a great experience! Well, there's some there's something about picking up a cover box and seeing like cover art, you know, and going Absolutely. oh, like and just being caught by it. Which, yeah. as much as Netflix tries to replicate that, and they do a good job, like they have a lot of good information, there's just something about picking it up and looking at it and going, and even like an older one, like the ones from the 80s were made different and had a different but this, like, way of pulling you in than definitely, the ones the there, There's something about when you pick up that cover box and you look at it, and it's either a movie you recognize or maybe you heard of it or, or something like that, but sometimes you made a decision based on chance. Yeah. Because there was a chance that that movie was going to be pretty bad or or whatnot. Or maybe it was a movie that maybe the acting wasn't fantastic, but the story got me. So it was still a cinema- cinematic experience to me, but there was that chance with it. But with Netflix, you can always just turn on something else. But when That's you true. physically rent it and bring it home, yeah. you've made a commitment to it. You've actually given your hard-earned right. money at so the now, So now I have to make sure I make it through it. Yeah. And, and you, you know, how many times do you get surprised by something? I know. I know. That's crazy. So, so again, going there with your grandfather. But then, so growing up, was um, when did you end up working for Blockbuster? Um, I started when the summer before I went off to college. Um, the previous two summers, I had worked at a tree company with my buddy working under the tables getting cash. But um, there was a new store opening up in my town. And it was a mile down the street from me. And it was a Blockbuster. And... Um, so I helped open that store. I was a sales associate that first summer, which was a great experience. Um, setting up a store from the beginning, seeing that initial push of customers that came in. What is this place? Oh, my, my uncle told me, or my mother told me there's one of these in the town she lives in. Right. So that was, that was exciting. And that was what, late, late nineties? Uh, yeah, probably 98, I would say 98. And that North Reading Blockbuster was, I know that Woburn, where we ended up working later, which will be a topic of the next show, um, became the corporate headquarters, but North Reading was for a little while. All the training and everything happened in the back uh, It wasn't that, yeah, so Woburn being the head office, 
North Reading, um, the ma first manager I had, she was absolutely fantastic. Um, she just got Blockbuster in terms of their policies and bringing new managers in or assistants and whatnot. And they spent some of their first three to four weeks with us at the store. Right, I remember that. And so we that. trained them on everything from how the store is supposed to look, face, how you merchandise and, and kind of go after additional sales. Um you know, popcorn here, stacked here, that kind of stuff. How to talk to customers about late fees, um, all that kind of stuff that they taught the management. Sorry, sorry. It's um, it, but it was a good training environment. I mean, people came in. I had a lot of fun as as a uh, kid getting ready to go off to college. That was my summer job before I went off to UMass. And I think that's an important thing to push on. That I think we've talked about here is that the job was fun. And that's a thing that I think people can't necessarily comprehend. Like even working at a movie theater, that job is, it's kind of soul crushing. I know a lot of people went from Blockbuster to movie theaters, like Paul, my brother, and always talk yeah, about how, or or best or Best Buy because you don't really get to interact with no. the product on no. the same level that you do. Like Best Buy isn't telling you to go home and watch their product. Exactly, the movie theaters aren't telling you necessarily to on your off time going. But it was an experience. Yeah. I mean, the people that would come in and. They just, you know, they maybe, and it's a weird way to say it, but they had a connection with the employee that was working there. Yes, you kind of, you could tell the customers that came in and saw us joking around and liked that. Yes. And that was the reason they came back into the store. Sometimes if they didn't know what type of movie they were going to get, they went over to our employee favorite section. Which we weren't allowed to have up. after a while. Yeah, but we kept it up anyways. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> nice, but, nice. But no, yeah, that's important. You know, um, the... Because Blockbuster grew out of a, a type of store. Video stores were a niche thing. They were, you know, a mom and pop thing before Blockbuster came around. They were a thing for, it's like a comic shop. It's, I'm a fan of this, so I'm going to open this store and give people access to this. And Blockbuster still, the employees got that that was what kept people coming in, even though the corporate mindset had a different thing in mind and it was like walk it was a the, cool merging and, the, and the, the customers came in knowing what they had always thought of a video store and what it was and and what it was now and now i walked in and i was in a big choice video that's where i was big there choice. was movies of whatever maybe i wanted to see there was a lot of copies Ooh, navy seals navy seals i wonder what charlie sheen's up to i should get him on the show Charlie, he probably would do it. If, if, if he would he, definitely, if I yeah, sent him enough cocaine, yeah. he'd definitely that's, that's do it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he probably would. He probably would. Cool, man. So so that's North Reading. And then you ended up, did you end up coming back to North Reading or was your first manager job at Salem? Uh, my first manager job was at Salem. So I went off to school at UMass and I actually continued to... As he puts it, the only UMass, even though I went to UMass Lowell. It's the flagship. And I do the same thing with my wife, who is from UMass Dartmouth. So it, we're, we're the flagship. I just, I just needed to get that in there. That's all right. And, and UMass did make it to the final four. Of we the, did. Uh, the the um, ice, sorry, brain shutting we, off. We did. How did Lowell do this year? Not well. <laughs> That's what I'm sorry saying. To hear you that. guys made I'm it. sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's okay. I'm sorry. Sounding like an arrogant Boston sports fan. We, even though we both went to technically Boston area schools. That's true. That's true. So I, at, when, when I went when I went to UMass, um, I still actually continued to work. Like even so, my first couple of years, I worked as a sales associate, maybe twenty hours a week, because my dad told me he goes, "I'll give you some money to help you out at school, but you need a part time job to support the fun you're gonna have on the weekend." Yeah, to my dad your habits. and my dad actually said that to me. If you're gonna go out with your friends and have some beers or whatever you're gonna do, I'm not paying for that. I'll help you out with a couple other things, but. So your dad was awesome. Yeah, so I worked um, part time at Hadley store and in Northampton, maybe ten hours a week at each store, and um, so then I graduated from school and couldn't get a job right out of college. So uh, I was still working at the blockbuster that I worked at before in North Reading in my hometown, and they said, "Hey, you want to be an assistant manager?" Yeah, sure. They paid me a couple bucks more an hour. I was assistant manager, and. Was doing a good job, obviously, and next thing I know, as a 22-year-old kid, they said, hey, we have a store for you. I said, what do you mean you have a store for me? And they're like, be the store manager at a store in Salem. The manager there isn't there anymore. Things happen, uh, but you've done a great job here, and now I'm a 22-year-old kid making more money than I've ever seen in my life. 
Yeah. And it's not like it was a lot of money, but it was more money than I was making as an assistant oh, dude, manager at, at, at Block. 22, Buster. imagine how sweet. I, I can't even, like, a re- retail salary is. Like, it's, it's uh, crazy. And all it does is that extra money just takes your lifestyle as a 22-year-old kid and just kind of kicks it into overdrive. Yep. And, and that's kind of what I did for a little bit. And it was fun. Use your it imagination. Fun. It was fun. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but... You know, because God might look down and you say, oh, it was fun. That's all I'm going to say. But again, I still say best boss I ever had because of all the fun we had. Thanks, man. No, and all the fun we ever had and all the, you know, dumb. Look at at the friendships Dumb young mistakes. Look at the friendships we made. We worked together how many years ago? And Oh, God, we worked. And and, and again, we'll get into the second show, you know, as well. But we worked together um, from 2000 till 2003. Uh, Two? Might, eh, I feel like it was. It even, might have been later. Yeah, it was. Ter- but, I spent. Yeah, but then. Three years, but maybe. then I. But then they brought me over to Woburn, yeah, and yeah. I was there till two thousand six. Yeah. Two thousand seven, yeah. and then I ended up, and I got to get Michelle on because then I I left Blockbuster, and she hired me back to work in Peabody and paid me to be an assistant store manager, <laughs> but I was a CSR. <laughs> So how how was she paying you then? So she she got me she got hours. me hired no she got me hired back yeah. at my remember my assistant store manager rate in Woburn was ten dollars and eighty cents an hour. That was that my fault? No, you fought the, for the, it. The, the, the problem it the problem is, no, is that you they fought wouldn't for pay. And they screwed me. You would have dedicated employees, and they were willing to put in as many hours as they wanted, make the store look as great as it was. I mean, being a corporate office store. Just weren't going to get that co- extra. No, the bucks. problem. Yeah. The problem they ended up having, and I remember you fighting for it because you were bullshit. And again, this is. Pr- I was bullshit. Pr- you you were angry. All right, I'm serious. Angry. Angry. All right. Yeah, pissed off even. There you go. That um, might have been. <laughs> um, they came back to the number, and you came to me and said that I had fought for this, but the reason was is because I was a part time assistant store manager. That's right. You I only worked weekend not. shifts because I was at, in college. Yeah, but the amount of stuff you were getting done on a weekend, not yeah. only not only helping the customers and driving sales for the company, which is what they wanted, but you would do all the resets. You would like, uh, oh, the you would just set up the sections for the new release yep. wall. Like on two a days Sunday early. instead of a Monday. He would do it on a Sunday for us, and I would come in on Monday, and it'd be done. And it just a note would be like, all set, dude. Have a great Monday. Right. Holy all, crap, all man. Set, As a manager, that was amazing. But anyway, um, so yeah, that that's the next show. But that's a preamp. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. This is this tangents are what I'm all about. I do run a show called The Tangent, don't I? 25026. 25026. That's where we burn. Yeah. 25032 is Salem. There you go. And um, Scott's going to get his account added in Blockbuster Ben, just like I did, which is really cool. I know. Looking at home, I actually found a couple of my old Blockbuster oh, I got to get a picture. Put those all on the table. I got to get a picture nice. of those later. But my old store card from Salem and from North Reading. Property Crazy. of copyright 1998 Blockbuster Inc. There you go. One card was issued on 430.03. They were both issued on 430.03 because one's a reprint. <laughs> those were printed in... 430.03. Yeah, but what store were they printed at? Four Forty One Main Street. That was Woburn. Yep, downtown Woburn. Yep, Four Forty One Main Street, which is now a Century Bank or a People's Bank. Well, they turned a lot of blockbusters into, into banks. banks, and I think they were banks before as well. Really, a lot of the because that Woburn building was definitely not set up to be a blockbuster. No, and we'll no. talk about that in the next podcast. That was not set up. No, to be a blockbuster. Salem though. That was the Salem was built for a was built to be yep. a blockbuster, and now it's a sub shop and a. Liberty tax. Anyway. <laughs> well, at least there's a sub shop there. It's true. Um, so, okay. So, Scott, we, we just talked about you getting in Salem. So, before meeting me, what was your experience with the staff at Salem? How long were you at Salem before I got there? Not long. Probably, I don't know, five months? Five, six months? Probably and that, that was, range. And what was the staff there at the time? You had Steve? Yeah, I had Steve. Was Jeremy there or had Jeremy been pre-fired? Because you rehired no, Jeremy Jer- when Jeremy I was Jeremy was there. not hired yet, so... No, he, he, had, he had been fired prior. He had... <laughs> he had Jeremy's been, a whole no, other story. But he had been fired, but um, we hired him, I can't... I with, would say probably right around the same time as you. Probably six um, months later because we we had to fight for it because you had to play. The funniest part is he though, got as as I said with Steve, Jeremy got fired for bullshit reasons. Yes, and you completely went to bat for him with corporate and got him hired back. They were like, oh yeah, that's bullshit. And well, they hired him back. Yeah, yeah, but I was going to hire him because such a cool dude that was in the store and knew the amount of people there, and he approached and talked to me like someone he had known all his life. Yeah. 
And but he was hanging out at the store, and I said, you know what? You can hang out at the store, man. You might as well work here with us. We have Jeremy's a big topic of conversation on this podcast, and I'll I'll say as I've said it again, that time of Jeremy's life. He doesn't like revisiting so much. Okay. So I've I've honored that by not having him on here. But I will reiterate because I know he listens that Jeremy is one of my very best friends, and I'm so glad you got him back there because he uh, the store wouldn't have been complete without him. Yeah, but if, I tell you the amount of, of memories that I still have working with Jeremy because he I mean, was absolutely amazing because he was a workhorse. Jeremy is not is not the you know, go and set up the new release wall kind of employee. Jeremy is the customer camaraderie type of employee. Jeremy would just, everybody loved him. Everybody that talked to him wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, he, he, people came back to I see could, him. I could talk movies with yeah. Jeremy all day long. All day long. <laughs> his, his knowledge was deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to say the least. So, okay, so five months goes by and then, um, and this is, you know, a little, a little dig on you. Cause I, I always like bringing this up. Oh, the, I fact, was, the fact that actually I, Thought I was hiring someone else. Yep, they, they had two employees to, to talk funny. about, and he he picked me out of false pretenses because he thought it was the other guy he interviewed. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though, in a way. And, and then Steve was like, no, this is Bob Chipman's brother, the guy we told you you should hire, and you were like, oh, oh. I thought that's the guy I picked. I was like, well, it was supposed to be anyway, so <laughs> keep on trucking. Let's go. Keep on trucking. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap. Cheese. God, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. You know what though? I I was funny. I was thinking about that driving here. So it's uh, that was. Let's see. So I got that job the summer of the year two thousand. I think it might have been the summer of the year two thousand one. Going into it, I can't remember. What year it was were after you I broke. Well, it was is after I broke my knee, and I broke my knee in two thousand. So it must have been going into two thousand one. Okay. But I just remember I got this. I have a photo of it. I put it on Twitter. But it's a photo of me in front of my Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais because I was driving my mom's minivan to work. Was that like your first, first day? That was my first day with the Cutlass. Really? But I had worked for like a month in my mom's okay. minivan. Okay. But anyway, um, so because I remember in like closely within my first year, 9-11 happened. That was like, you know, my introduction to Blockbuster was having to work through that because I worked the summer prior yeah. and then went back down to part time hours. Part time hours, which in which where you know Chris would come home from school and do his homework and then come to work for a full forty hour week. So yeah, but <laughs> and the fact- still had a three point eight GPA and got into school as an engineer. But he to come out and hang out with friends. Hey, come in and and help us uh, redo the drama section or uh, help us put away and and stick. Us- hey, I need you to come hang out with us and sticker the new DVDs. And just say hello to the occasional customer. Yes. Or, uh, okay. or or we know you're 17 and you technically can't work past 10 o'clock at night. So go walk out the door and punch out and come back in in your street clothes and you're going to help us do inventory and Scott's going to give you 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have done that. <laughs> Which I always thought was hilarious. Um, yeah, and we couldn't, couldn't pay you via the clock. We'd no, get you in couldn't. a shit ton of trouble. Yeah, of course. But you still I wasn't going to give up that gig. Believe no. Me. No, and um, and I've we've talked on other podcasts. The Coca Cola container during inventories would also, oh geez, while the customers were still in the store, Does have that... have two or three rows of Coke and then Sam Adams <laughs> in between them to be and, and Mike's hard lemonade. Cause, no, because you made a decision how many minutes before close that what was the probability that you would be able how many customers might actually buy a coke in the but last but then they could take the coke from hour. both sides of the cooler so yeah. you had to take so we would get started with that and then you would see what the mood of the crew was on the overnight were they were they anxious to get the inventory done did they want to prolong it and by mean prolonging it we might have had more beers but um, i think we'd all like clock out i think the idea was like two or two hours into the inventory to make sure the numbers were still good no but because yeah. we were going a little slower <laughs> you know just I mean, a little bit but those were the those were the nights that we had to do rental yeah. and sell through on the same night and candy yeah but you know what i would rather get it done on one night than when they uh, moved to yes we did the rental in one night and then over a two-week period we did all the sell through and they broke it up it was like do candy on this Monday. That sucks. Do sell through DVDs, PVDs. I'm like, come on. I liked it better when you night. could choose. And yeah. you could choose. Yeah. So you do it on a Saturday night. So it was a weekend. Yeah. So all your employees could be on board. Yeah. Um, you'd get most of the staff would just come in and clock in at 11 p.m., help yeah. close the store, and then do the inventory. It worked yeah. out great. Because the store would be destroyed. 
So you need extra help anyway. Oh, you'd be busy anyways from ringing out. But ringing but out then people. but then none of your rental would be in there. So it made inventory yeah. really easy. It was and a good night to do it because you already have an inventory because you know where it is. Mm-hmm. It's with you know this guy down the street who's angry and doesn't like it. He doesn't like what the movie he rented because it was Fight Club and you and I recommended it to him and he was angry. Well, here's the problem, man. You fucking asked me my opinion. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm dropping an F-bomb. It, it is no, you is, can but, you can drop all the fucking but, F-bombs but you, in the world. But you asked for my opinion, and I gave you my opinion on the movie. And actually, some most of the time, I actually even... We would back it up with each other, too. It'd be like, hey, hey, Chippa, what do you think about... Uh, Chippa! No, but what do you think yeah. about this movie? And another employee would chime in. And, and, and actually, even a third employee might be like, don't rent that. Because we wanted that customer to make the decision on their own. I like agree. to give an opinion of a movie. Well, what do you think about this? Yeah, we got a bunch of copies in, but you know, when I checked it out last week, it you know, I don't know, it just didn't hit with me. You know, the story didn't hit with me. That was the and thing. Being yeah, we, honest with the customers, we, we never wanted to sell them necessarily what the company was telling us to sell. We wanted to sell them what they would go home happy with because they'd be a repeat um, customer that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but anyway, so so that, that's inventory, and we've we've gone in. You know, there was the inventory we did when Manager X was opening in the morning, as you call her Snaggle. Yeah, that was her given name. Snaggle. Snaggle. There was there was another name there too, but we uh, we we leave that one out. We do. Uh, we do. <laughs> I think it's important. I've already uh, dropped one f bomb. Yes, you, so Snaggle. I try to keep them out of me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she, um, you know, she wasn't a good person. We've gone into that on the podcast with Paul before, which is kind of a bummer. That's not a twist off, dude. He thinks he's drinking a freaking Budweiser here. Not at Chippa's house. This is a Mystic Bridge IPA from Cottrell Brewing Company in uh, Connecticut. And it's, it, it's pissing all over the place. Good job. <laughs> it's you right. cleaned up yours, like, not yeah. even two seconds before we started. I know. This. Um, I think it might be my fault. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Um, so there was the time Blame we the all... assistant manager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was Sorry. a time we went to Denny's. Mm-hmm. Um, at our... You know, Denny's is a probably going to come up on this a lot by the time we went to denny's after inventory the one time (laughs) no every time and it's about 8 30 in the morning and manager x is about to come to open the store you know we had to be there at nine but knowing her she'd be there a quarter of ten and um so we figured we had some time and we had left empty beer bottles all over the uh, new release wall and the cold ones in the um coca-cola cooler yeah but the, the problem was is you you get that flash of moment like the mistake you had made like we tried to be careful during the evening make sure we didn't leave any you know cups along the floor or you know whatnot and then all of a sudden you have that moment you're like all sitting there having a moment at a restaurant just hanging with your friends and just shooting the shit and then holy crap we got to get back to the store so we decided we had a couple more minutes to chow down whatever food was in front of you and then we headed back to the store to clear clear the evidence and then i think i think that day what the funny thing was is she came back and saw us all in the store and actually you were pretty suave about it you go what you didn't know we were having a store meeting this morning (laughs) it was pretty damn good uh, but i I think it was a problem i think it might have been steve that actually had steve i need you to actually write down something that says like store meeting this date and with the time and pre-date and it. I need you to pre-date it and leave it in the office. We I will have, I will add done. a preempt here that you know um, both Scott and I obviously I've talked about what I do for work. Scott is still in retail management and doing freaking amazing. Did you say still in retail? Still in retail management. Oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, it's good, man. <laughs> I didn't it's... say that as a negative thing. I so so Scott is very successful in the job that he was incredibly successful at as a 22 year old i mean i think that's fucking awesome but we talk about all this joking and drinking and having fun we had the best numbers in the district that's the thing i have to remind people of yeah other you, stores wanted this staff but you look about you know <laughs> yes i i have been in retail a long time but looking back at those times yeah we were young immature kids but the fact of the matter is for blockbuster our store looked incredible it was faced every night. It was vacuumed every night. Never, it was filled every never night. Never failed the secret shop. If a DM walked in at any time, we always hit every point of the secret shop. You're right. We did. Never and failed. As much fun as we had as immature kids in this store. We didn't lose sight of the fact that the store was our priority. We were still employees of this company. Because actually the product that we were promoting... We liked. We liked. So <laughs> yes, we had, yes, we had to set this end cap the way it was supposed to be set. 
We were supposed to make sure the shelves were dusted. We, all didn't, that kind of we stuff. didn't steal. We didn't take no, advantage of, no. of the place. It was just people in there having a good time. Having with a friends. damn good time. Yeah, but good and, times. And that's the other thing, right? You had a holiday come up. The, the, the Blockbuster had this, I'll, I'll say, not a terrible thing, but the reality was a video store. You got to be open 24 hours, not 24, but seven days a week, 365 days sometimes a year. Sometimes it felt like 24 hours. It did feel like 20, and sometimes it was 24 hours. Um, I'm in not Woburn, even supposed to be here today. In Woburn. Uh, but, um, you know, the store didn't, you know, you didn't have Christmas off. You didn't have Christmas Eve off. You didn't have Thanksgiving. Now you might say, oh, you know, any holiday, any holiday that someone might hold near and dear to themselves, you didn't have off. So the company would say, well, everybody has to work. You can't give people time off. And we would go and say, okay, as a store, who's local? Who's close by? Okay, those of you that aren't, those of you that have family back in Michigan and out west and wherever. But you, some, we're sometimes, not, sometimes, we're not I would, sometimes I would just throw it out there and say, who wants to work? Yeah, like you're going to get paid this amount yeah, more to it, work. It was and some time people and a half. took the opportunity. And some people you just say, you're going to be out of the state? Fine, screw it. Who can step up? Have sometimes, fun. Sometimes we had managers that... Their life was in such a way that they had the day they did Christmas on a different day or they did Thanksgiving on a different day. So they said, "I'll take I'll take a ten hour shift. Yeah, you guys and, go enjoy your families." And, and then, then we and there were some years that we trade off. There were some years that maybe someone said, "I want to work a lot of hours and make the money, but you know, I don't want to stay the whole night." And I was like, "You know what? I get it. Thank you for helping out. So, you know." And we would throw it out there. Someone would always. We step actually up. had a meeting someone about would, it, but we someone would, would come in and maybe even close the store from like eight or nine. Yeah. Till we closed on a holiday is, at that point it didn't matter because you were coming in and actually spending time with your friends on a, with on people a good day and and a job that you like doing. And so then you could share the stories easy. of like yeah. what you did that day with your family, you know, yeah. and people. It, it was so it was a different approach, and and I liked the fact that the company allowed us the ability to make it our own like that. They just wanted us to stay open. They just wanted us to stay open. And so we whatever made we sure did, the store was open, yeah. but we did it together as a team. Exactly. Instead of it being like a, someone's getting the shit end of the stick. I don't think at our stores anyone ever felt like they were being screwed. Or and, told and they, they had to And if something. they did, I apologize. Or you made up for I it. I digress. Yes. Or you made up for it. it was, there was a trade-off. Okay, yeah. fine. You might have to work a six-hour shift on Thanksgiving. Fine. You get Christmas Day off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the whole day. Like and, if any, <laughs> and if anyone, there was such a a bond in the stores with the teams that we had, especially in Salem, that you always trusted what everyone said. So if someone said they were going to be with their family for a couple days, yeah, around you didn't Thanksgiving, call them on it. You didn't call them out on it because you believed them because we were working with friends every day. Yeah, and he, there was no need to lie. There was no need to no. go. Oh, here's why I can't be here today. It's like you could just say, "No, dude, I can't be here today because I have this thing planned." And you're like, yeah. "Cool, sweet, go yeah. go do it. Have fun." Scott Scott's gonna you know show up, or Chris is gonna show up, or Jeremy's gonna show up. We'll be there. We'll be there, and th- that I you know, and the customers felt that. Well. He, if you think about it, is on the holidays, it was kind of genius on Blockbuster's terms to not close. Because you think about people, you know, working wherever they're working and they're hanging out with family members and they're eating eating food and hanging out and watching something that's on TV or an old movie that uh, reminded them of the holidays, Thanksgiving or Christmas. And all of a sudden someone spoke up and said, you know what, let's still do that, but let's watch something different. Let's watch something that no one's seen. Yeah. And, and you got to go and out and that get was it. the experience. So you either, maybe you went in your car and you went to the movies, or maybe you went to a blockbuster. And or, it was pretty genius on their part. Or to your do kid that. gets the new video game system that came out that year. And oh, yeah. you forgot to get him a game with it. Oh, and you'd have like. Uh, All of a sudden we're there. Like Don't worry, we'll go to Blockbuster. They have 75 copies of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, we, and, and we were there to tell them what game was the best thing to get for that yep. system. You Absolutely, know? because and that was you the best felt- part. You had people that were f- like so loved video games and loved movies. And you'd have people like, no, you want to talk to this guy over here? Like, he has a passion for all the games we come in. He tries them all. And you would get that suggestion. No, you know. This guy, uh, this guy Chippa, like, if you want to talk about, like, old movies to see that relate to the movie that you might have seen yeah. last week, we're going to give you that recommendation. Yeah. And, and, that's and it's not we going to be, and it's of. not going to be the yeah. one written on the box. Yep. <laughs> you know, ah, that's. Good times. Good yeah. times. 
And, and that, that Tim, people would come in asking for Tim. All the time. They'd all come the in asking for you. <laughs> you all, all the time. They, they would pop in. I worked so many day shifts with Tim and just bonding from day one in Salem. People would come in and, and maybe Tim was on break or maybe he had gone to the bathroom or, you know, maybe he went uh, across the street to, um, oh, what was the grocery store over there? It was Shaw's. It Shaw's. That's it. And to get maybe snacks for whoever was working or, or whatnot. And people would come in and be like, is Tim here? <laughs> it's like, the daytime. Tim's supposed to be. What here. are you talking about? I know my movies too. Yeah, but Tim really knows them. Yeah. I'm like, but and I wouldn't and take offense a, to that. I don't take it's offense Tim. to that at all. <laughs> I feel like I love to just shoot it about movies too. But it's a different level. Tim was it's on a different, and level. that's why Tim runs his own movie podcast. Circumspection. <laughs> people would come in and grab the newsletter that he had on the counter on Tuesday mornings. Yes, they would. He would review the new movies that were coming out. That he would Tuesday. rent them all. He would get all. He would of rent them. them all. Yeah, and he actually said on his, he didn't think people ever grabbed him, but people grabbed him because they, they because they I came asking it. about it I all the time. It. Yep. He he likes to talk down himself a little bit. Tim's a good guy. Um. So uh, um. So what about you know you started working there? I was there I think during this time, but I didn't know about this. Like came in for my nighttime shift, but we talked about this with Paul. But as the store manager. What was it like, you know, with that that attempted robbery we had, which still seems a little weird because there was still a drawer left in one of the cash registers, which I think still to the day they closed, still had been tried to be pried open with a crowbar. And why would the person breaking into the store know the drawer was in there? But I digress. Because <laughs> uh, Manager X left the drawer in there during the day. Right. But anyway, um, how, how, how was that experience? Well, it's funny. You know, you get that alarm call at... Two o'clock in the morning, and I'm half asleep. I'm uh, just deep into a slumber and realizing that I don't even have to work in the next day until twelve o'clock. So I, you know, I didn't even have to be in until twelve o'clock to close the store. But I would want to close on a Saturday night. And does that sound weird to say that I wanted to close on a Saturday night? I always wanted to close on a Saturday night because it was so busy, and we could interact with the customers and have a good time. You'd get two registers that luckily at that store were right next to each other because yeah. you, you never had the manager pit register on. And yeah. you'd just be slinging. It was like working like a short order cook table. Like just you were getting people out as quick as you can and the line was so, just, and it was so much fun. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. It was good times. But to get that call in the morning that I think I was living... I don't know, on the you were couple still towns far away. over. Yeah. And so I said, all right, I'm coming to the store. Because you had to go to the store. That was policy. You had to go to the store. And actually, um, I got a hold of Paul because he wasn't that far from the store. He was in Danvers. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't that far from One the store. Over. And he knew I had about a 35-minute drive. And all we knew is that someone had crashed into the store. It could have been a burglary. It might not have been. And so I got a hold of Paul, and he flew down to the store. He beat me there. Yeah. And he was already in the store with the cops. Um, someone had tried to break into the store and actually pry open, like, the registers. You know, we never really found out, like, what they took. No. Like, the inventories were inconclusive. It was so, very strange that if we watched the security footage, that they went straight for the register. Yeah. But that Paul and I even speculated on that. I digress, but that was very uh, weird. Yeah, but that was kind of weird, um, you know. And we did have a couple shady people working for us. They probably shouldn't have been hired. I probably hired someone in desperation because we needed someone to be able to close during the week because none of us might not want him to close that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but um, it was uh, it was crazy showing up to the store and this cops already inside and. And Paul was um, on top of it. <laughs> he had already handled the situation. He'd already handled the situation. You know, it was, uh, and that's what we had there. You know, Paul had keys to the store. I think a couple other people had keys to the store at that point too. I know Stevie obviously did. Yeah, Paul was the assistant. Well, Paul and Steve were both assistants. Yeah, actually. Yeah. And they then the company the did that weird thing where they made shift leaders, but we. <laughs> so you had to pick one, and that sucked. Yeah. So. You know, it was just a, to be able to show up to the store and see it broken into, there was almost like a pride that got hit. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, like no, is it was there, a personal attack. No, did the windows actually get broken in this, not only the store, Blockbuster store, but this place that we hung out at every day? 
they, did someone actually think that they could get away with this? And we and were what, pissed. And, and we were what pissed. were they really trying to pull, like take it? Like I mean, we we did well. I mean, the stores got good business. We did good money, but they, you know. What were they really going to steal? Five, six grand? Yeah. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, mo- most of the transactions were through cards anyways because right. people were paying their late fees with how- the value of the movie we were charging them. So at that point, if I really wanted to see a movie, guess what I had to do? I had to bust out some sort of credit card to pay for it. Right, exactly. And then as soon as you pay for that credit card, guess what? Next time we'll charge it. We'll charge that card. Yeah, but that was and and Blockbuster, the yeah. last ones in the world have changed their tune on that. Great. They don't they I don't have it. credit cards it. on the accounts. Um and the well though they do, but the charge is ninety nine cents a day. They said they had to compete with Redbox. But that's a that's it's a great. trust factor and, with customers. And yep. if people call and say look it, then they know the customer, they'll just re rent it to them mm. over the phone. Which I think is great. The other cool thing that they said is since they've had to close all the other stores down, yeah, the people that were renting from those old stores, if they come and make the trek to the new store, they'll let them drop them in the drop boxes of the old store and they'll go and pick them up and bring them. Holy crap. How cool is that? That's awesome. Yeah. Like, That's awesome. Like, here's an incentive for you to come. You know what the funny thing is? I actually think if they had that when we were younger and working there, I would have done it. I agree. Because it was blockbusters everywhere where I was. Well, think about so it this way. if I was home or with friends that lived in other towns, there was always a blockbuster. Think about near. it this way. If people... The biggest problem that we ended up having was people that would return their movies at another store and then got angry that they got charged a late fee because that other store would put it on the shelf and call us the next day, right? The deal... If they had just made it be like a you can drop it off at the other store. Dude, you totally and, just had a stout burp. Yeah, I did. I'm just saying. <laughs> sorry about sorry, that. Sorry. Blah. And the other store had a way to check it in. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And then they yep. just bring it back. We. It's not like someone was dropping off a movie from Salem in Maine. They were dropping off a movie from Salem in Lynn and in Beverly and in Danvers. And exactly. And all These stores are so close all by. Of our, all of our systems were connected. So even if it was Beverly, which was the only franchise in the area. Yeah. The number that was generated in Salem or Lynn would still work in Beverly. Right, they could call and us. There was always and someone that might count, and you would help. You would if we had that. You'd always you'd talk to your staff and be like, "Is anyone going to be in the Lynn area today? Right. Or is anyone going to be Chippa? I know that store is right down the street from your house. Just drop this off. Can, can you grab whatever movies they might have of us and yeah. bring it back? Yeah. And there was a camaraderie that I don't think necessarily the company understood. Um, we took care of it, but I don't think they knew yeah. it. Uh, and I'm not saying it's not. This isn't like the fuck blockbuster podcast. We love no, blockbuster. no, 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 no. But but th- I don't there think a, I don't think they they paid as much attention to that. No, there's certainly there was a lot more um, caring that was going on in the store than what they thought was going on. Right. So you know that's the only thing that like these stores were because we knew people that worked at the Lynn store or Swamp Scott or Woburn or Stoneham or wherever it happened to be. Everyone knew people that worked at those other stores. Right. And oftentimes we had our own accounts at those stores and could go and work there whenever we wanted. No, why not? Why not? <laughs> um, so uh, it's crazy. So I, I had you sign the gumball machine, which I'm going to end up having everybody that comes on do because I think that's super cool. But that is, you, you can attest to it, right? I've told people, but that is our gumball machine, right, Scott? It's, it's the original from it's Salem. It's the original. Carl and Ray gumballs and all. Carl and Ray, one of one of Blockbuster's brilliant marketing schemes. It worked. People the loved two it. Two rabbits, you know. Do you remember when they had a late night store meeting that they had you have to call to show that off because they were premiering it on TV the next day? Yeah, Do you remember and they, that? Yeah, and they'd put little little caricatures of on the Carl gumballs. and Ray on the gumballs, and they would actually have signs that we put up in the kids department. Um, you would have the little plush toys. It worked. Um, they would. We would sprinkle those throughout the store, and and make a couple extra dollars for the company. Right. And if we were making a couple extra dollars, um, that was good because it kind of uh, kept them off our backs a little bit. It did. And the gumballs. I've talked about this in the earlier shows, but how wild was it that the company's inventory system? And you've you've been, you know, in. In retail management and understood, you know, how different companies work. But it always amazed me that Blockbuster's whole thing wasn't about the individual dollar of the transaction as much as it was transactions. Their whole thing was, if you rent them a movie, if you rent them a 99 cent bag of popcorn, we like that second transaction with every movie. You know what I mean? Well, and they, and sometimes it was just that, you know, and we kind of bought into it in Salem is... We did. 
But if you were getting them to buy that extra dollar of candy or popcorn or soda, whatever it happened to be, um, the the amount of money, the margin they were making off of it, oh, it was insane. Was significant that maybe they weren't making it on the video. They weren't, but they were making it on the uh, popcorn, soda, and their late fees, and, and the and gumballs. That's what really drove the money that was coming into the store. And so here's the crazy thing: so they wouldn't give us hours based on monetary transaction. They would give us hours based on quantity of transactions. Yeah. So we would do gumballs, which you'd have the new employee like me scan all of the quarters in the gumball machine and then if you did it a week before a week you knew you needed hours it would boost your hours <laughs> well because because <laughs> each one counted i mean each you, one counted you could, you could throw 10 onto one transaction 10 on yep. another yep. you know they just didn't they wanted to see it go through as one lump sum when you did it and they wanted you to do it weekly but yep. sometimes we would let it build up and we <laughs> would run we would run on hours for what we were supposed to do for a three week period, and then for one week of the month, we would totally blow labor. Oh, and, and you just have it. everyone working, and especially if someone was coming back from college, yeah. like for a week for break, yeah. or if we had an inventory, then you could have you know everybody on inventory. We'd yeah. throw on Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, or Pulp Fiction on the store play, and we just run. So that's the thing. What was your favorite uh, movie to put on for inventory? Uh, or what's like your fondest memory of like one where we could all quote it without even watching it, you know? Uh, it might it might be something Kevin Smith. It had to or, have been, right? Or maybe a Tarantino flick. Uh, but most of the time it was something Kevin Smith because if you're scanning rental Dogma tapes... Dogma was a big one. But if you're scanning rental tapes or DVDs or whatever you're scanning um, and you're trying to get the work done, you'd have to have something that was a great dialogue. Yeah. And something that you maybe necessarily didn't need to be watching the screen to enjoy the movie. Right. Just you'd hear that, you know, you'd hear the interaction between the actors as you were, whatever you were doing. And it's almost like you had a couple music albums on at a time. Yeah. You know, two to three music albums and it was just uh, stand-up comedy the whole time. People would start, uh, you know, say lines before they started. Like, fuck you, Finish dude. Them. Yeah. Uh, it, you know what? It was... Uh, to something to keep it in the background and keep dialogue going between well, everyone that was working. Because inventory, for those of you that can't picture it, you had four or five employees at different areas of the store. You weren't right next to each other. At different areas of the store with a long extended scanner, like a register scanner, scanning movie after movie. Oh, fuck, this barcode doesn't work. Now I have to go up front and look at the freaking number and type it into the computer. Michelle, 3325032, da, 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 you, know, you know what I mean? You'd have to, and, and it was just this monotonous mess. And so if you had, you know, clerks on, you'd have, it, it brought you together from across the store. Where yeah, and you'd, go, you'd, you'd have, have Salsa Shark, you know, yeah, and you'd have the store. You'd have different people working together yeah. in a section. You know, you might have someone in drama, someone in comedy, someone doing the new release wall, someone scanning popcorn and candy and stuff. But it was close enough that we could yell out and yep. be interactive during the inventory. And someone is up at the register. Hey, can someone get me a number for whatever it happens to be? And for Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. As I look at it. <laughs> hmm. That's funny. Which one did uh, Steve sign? I don't know which one was Steve's. I think it might have been this movie, Chugs Cock Hard, Gene Shalit. The best part of it would be actually <laughs> if we were half we, illiterate and half had a brain and we actually wrote our names next to it. Wouldn't that have been great? But no, we weren't thinking of that. We we never thought this would be framed. Erotic. Games. Gorgeous. That's the original one. Roger that Ebert. is the original. And that's the one that catches my eye every time. <laughs> Better <laughs> than watching porn, but not by much. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> We're sorry, Nickelodeon. Um, yeah, so I, I brought that I up because I don't. I don't how, how long has it been since you've seen that? Uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> um, That's funny. So, so yeah, inventories were wild. Um, and, and as Scott puts, you know, there was a camaraderie. You know, I, I go back to the fact that we're talking about a lot of goofy things we did, but you know, when I got hired at the company I'm at now in a you know engineering position, Scott jumped on to um, what's that? work sharing social network site that oh, we're all on. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And wrote this incredible recommendation for me. And it's like we were twenty two and seventeen, you know, when we we're working, but it's like even then, 
I recognized his ability at, you know, just being a damn good manager. And he recognized my ability at 17 somehow as being well, a good employee. You were a 17-year-old kid that didn't act like a kid. Right. Like uh, the, I took the job professionally. And, and I, you know, we joke around all the time and, you know... Just talking about good old dick and fart jokes the first dicks. half hour or whatever. So it is. many dicks. Yeah, but we're talking about dick and fart jokes. But, you know, in, in all due seriousness, um, you know, you weren't 17. No. You know, you were, you know, maybe this, you know, 26, 27 year old kid and just like the, just taking on the responsibility. You know, to be able to hand keys to a kid that was 17, 18 years old. Yeah. It and, just and didn't happen. And that's the crazy thing. You know what? I actually think. We might have only been in Salem together for like a year and a half, two years. Because I was 18 or 19 when I got the keys in Wooper. Yeah. So yeah. this is, I think this is a much more truncated time than I like to think it was. <laughs> you but know it, what I mean? But it, that's, a, that's a good thing. If you think about yeah. those memories and it just kind of spreads out. And it it seemed seems... like it was like five or six years, but yeah. I don't think it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, and I bring it back to, there was a time... So because I went, I ended up, you know, in, I was in school. So I was in uh, senior year of high school when I started working with Scott and them. So Scott and I ended up doing the Friday night close Saturday open because Tim worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Tim was our weekday opening guy and that was his 40 hours. So we needed people to do the closes and the opens on the weekend. So it was me and Scott on Friday, Paul on Saturday and Scott and I did the close open, and then Steve opened on Sunday. And, and that's th- how it was I, every week. But I, but I think the thought process for you and me was, yes, I had to work until 12 o'clock or but we, even 1 o'clock in Woburn. But we would just close the store but, and then come in and really get it ready in the morning. So we kind of got out earlier. But you open, you get out earlier, and you get to, to hang out and have a Saturday yep, night. Exactly. And then maybe you work on Sunday, maybe you weren't. The Sunday was kind thing, of a The funniest end. thing, though, was often on Saturday nights we'd hang out. <laughs> so that was even crazier. But I will say this. Going back to the joking thing, okay. I was 17. I have kids. I'm not saying I condone any of this behavior, but when you're standing in front of a register and you have a line of people, that's freaking monotonous. And we had fun and we didn't, you know, get stupid. We never broke any, well, you were breaking laws, but I wasn't. Uh, I was? (laughs) Yeah, you were giving an underage kid um, Sam Adams Winter Lager, which was my favorite beer of all time at the time, that we had hidden in the manager's pit. (laughs) Did I do that? (laughs) Yes, you did. Uh, that's (laughs) That's not good. But, again, you always made sure... That I wasn't drinking too much. Yeah. No, I want to say this. We had fun. This was, it was like, a, it, again, my, my dad wasn't really there for me all we that actually, much. We actually always had someone, uh, Scott, someone that would be a DD. Scott, like Scott being five years older than me, and I didn't bring this up to shit on Scott. I brought this up to say that these are experiences that like a 17 year old kid and their dad would be doing. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean that at putting you older. I'm saying my, my dad was a rough character. And I've talked about him on this podcast before. And so it was part of that, you know, like friend camaraderie of like, you know, oh, I'll get, I'll, Chris can have a beer with me on a Friday night. We're busy. You know what I mean? But it wasn't seven beers. Do you know what I mean? It was no, just, it was no. a beer. And it was yeah. a good time. But we'd end the shift and you'd go, are you okay to drive home? And we'd sit there and talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, I'm trying to say back to the fact that this it's like a 1980s Amblin movie. The kids are driving around on bikes without helmets on. The kid might drink a beer before he's 21. But these this is this is um growing up. This is Absolutely. growing up. And and we were and you know, I, I think of it as you being a lot older. We were growing up together. You were learning a career which you're freaking you were freaking good at at 22 and you're still doing it. You know what I mean? There's you a know, lot to be said and, for and that. And there was in this certain <laughs> connection to to the people you work with every day. And when you have that environment each and every day where it didn't matter how old the person was, you connected with that person, you respected them, you you loved to have fun, you loved to just have an experience each and every day. Right. I mean, it was, it was to be able to hang out with your friends each as and every Steve, day was a great As point. Steve put it, it's you didn't look at the schedule and say, who am I working with tonight? You said, who do I get to see? But it because it didn't Which matter. Which friend do I hang out with? Because tonight? it didn't matter. Exactly. It didn't matter who was working. And that that wasn't always the case. <laughs> um, after a while, which was kind of a bummer. But um, we can get into that. Uh, so we've all talked about it. You can't really do a, a a podcast about talking about video stores without talking about. As Scott already mentioned, Kevin Smith. Um, now, Scott, let's. What's your um, history with Kevin Smith? 
I don't know. It just he, he he always resonated with me from from day one watching any of his movies. It was just the, you know, seeing Clerks for the first time and a black and white film that just resonated with me. It resonated me with my life and and being a young kid and and having to open the store every day, but. You know, you were friends with the people you work I'm with. I'm not and, even supposed to be but you, here. But you'd be talking about the random shenanigans that happen each and every day. And that's what you did. And you know what? Maybe you made fun of that customer that just left the store when there was no one in the store. You know, just having that um, camaraderie each and every day. And as much as Dante and Randall, you know, and the shenanigans they go through, you know, they would do anything for each other. Right. They would do anything for it. Absolutely. Time. And um, God, man, just, how much how much did that come full circle in Clerks too? I remember all of us in the audience watching that movie and going, there's something each person that that movie spoke to on well, a different and this, level. And that's the best part about his movies too is that there's different characters that... You associate re- with. But they resonate with different people. And... Sometimes you might not even talked about it with it with with your friends or whatnot, but no, because sometimes um, it might be kind of dark. That's the other thing yeah, I, I noticed. Yeah. I know, I know. I mean, you stuff we've been through in life, right? I know that you've been through, that I've been through. There's some things you kind of want to leave on the cutting room floor that, especially Clark's two ties into. I know Steve um, talked about on his. Steve was getting ready to move to Florida, and that Dante was moving to Florida with the wrong person. Like, that's the whole point of that movie. And Steve was with the right person, but found out that Florida was the wrong move for him. And a lot of his friends were pissy about it. And that movie was, like, looking right at him. And Steve yeah. like goes, that movie, like, was pointing at me and going, don't do this, asshole. And it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah, but when you... Just having that director that you just kind of get, you know, it's just kind of the way that you look at life that, you know, even seeing him now just, just posting all these pictures and videos and everything from the from the production of reboot like i just get that like i'm, oh, have I'm you looking watched at it all? yeah i've been watching the videos every day and and different pictures and still fit pictures and just seeing the goofiness of making the reboot and and just seeing you know everything that he's been through he almost and died how much fun d- is he having making this movie right now yeah it, it looks it looks again you know that that that's a good tie in so jay and silent bob strike back now i was 17 18, 17. So, like a Beatles song. Yeah, uh, when I was 17. Um, so anyway, I was coming into this love of film, this love of the more niche geek film, kind of right at the time that all like Scott and other people at the store were kind of deeper into it. So Kevin Smith, I was shown by my brother. My brother's three years older than me. We watched Clerks, Small Rats, Dogma. You know, and there was Jersey Girl, and I love Jersey Girl, but Jersey Girl's a bit of a step in a different direction. I like it, get, though. For, I love for, it. For what I it was, it. you know, um, you, you I, look at... I've just, not disliked a single film he's made. I've, I've talked about that before. I like pretty much all of them. People just don't like it because he put J-Lo. Exactly. That's and, the reason they don't like it. Yeah. And but she, they, he killed her. Yeah, he did kill her. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but he was doing a movie where he took that extra step and he, he paid a little bit extra to get... A different actor yeah. in this film. And he was trying to, you know, make make a different type of movie. He's done that a couple times, and, you know, we've gotten to that. But Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is... We talk about, you know, the Marvel movies, the the Star Wars films. All these things now are amazing, but they're all very fan servicey. And before, the fans, the, the us, the geeky people, didn't get as many fan servicey films, right? People talk about fatigue, but we're finally getting all the stuff we wanted. Kevin Smith was the first one to kind of do a fan servicey movie for, you know, his $20 million movie show up kind of group of people. So he makes this movie, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which is a movie for us. It's not a great film, but it's my favorite. <laughs> you know, it just makes me so happy because it's just him running around with yeah, all because, characters because having if you, fun. If you look at it, the you know the dialogue, the the inter, you know the connection between the characters, the breaking of the fourth wall. It doesn't have <laughs> what his other films did, but you just think of like the funness of it and the uh, the cameos and he just... created a cinematic universe. He and, did, and it's hilarious. He did. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we went as a group of people. So Steve and Casey, who were both working for us at the time, had gone and seen this movie at Comic Con with Kevin Smith and James Hughes, and then they came back and they said, "No, opening night, we're all going," and we all went. 
And we ended up seeing this movie seven, eight, nine times together because the late night, one o'clock in the morning, we and, played it. And during that time period, to see it that many times, you would decide, well, the store closed at 12. Let's get out what, early what was, and get what was, over and see this. How much time did we need to get down to Liberty Tree Mall? To uh, <laughs> Hollywood Hits? Yeah. Across from Liberty Tree Mall, yeah, which yeah. is now closed. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Hollywood Hits wow. is closed. Wow. Yeah. It surprised me, though. It doesn't surprise me, but I loved them. How's Liberty Tree Mall doing? Fine. Yeah. Liberty Tree Mall's got a sky zone. They're doing... Uh, so they're doing what they do with malls now. It, what they do with malls. Exactly. They have a liquor store. A mall a mall with a movie theater and a liquor store. Think about that. You just encourage me bad behavior. And the movie theater has a bar. Oh, even better. Yeah. So uh, that's just a completely other story. It is. <laughs> but, it is. Uh, um, but, you know, we'd go and see this movie and it... It's another thing. It brought us all closer together because we got every joke. And if you didn't, you'd go, shit, you haven't seen Chasing Amy? Let's go to Steve's house and watch Chasing Amy. You yeah, know, and then no, people would get it the was, jokes. Um, just being able to, because we would just quote Kevin Smith movies all day. All day. And, and Scott would turn them on in the direct TV and then lock the remote in the back room and leave me with the porn ordering scene in Clerks while I had a line of customers. Maybe because I thought it was funny. It was hilarious. Yeah. And that was another corporate thing of, no, no, sorry, we don't have an employee working here under that name. <laughs> but then again, we're going to put this direct TV right next to the register. And you're going to be able to put on whatever you channels you, you put, want. Dude, we or can, you put, can on put on Cinemax. Or you can put we, on a DVD. We watched The Bear Wench Project after close one time. Just we did? It was, it's terrible. We thought it was, it was on Cinemax. We're like, put it on. I don't remember that. We after probably close. did, though. After close. We probably did. <laughs> The Bear Wench Project is hilarious. Why am I not remembering it? It's a bad porn version of the Blair Witch Project. We watched that in the store? We did. Who was watching it? Me and you and Steve and Jeremy. I wasn't watching it. I don't remember. Yeah, you were. Oh, sorry. Scott wasn't watching it. I had to play that manager role. He was the boss. All of us hanging out in the... Yeah, I wasn't. He was the boss. Whatever they do on their own time, it is what it is. Even though I was participating a lot in the video. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just you know just don't tell them I was participating yeah, exactly no anyway uh, so yeah that, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back fan um, and so you know I hope that we all all of us blockbuster folk get to go and see the Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back reboot because remember there's been a ton of reboots and that's the joke and Kevin Smith thought hey I have this goofy movie that's like the least of my you know, quality films, but it's the most jokey and in jokey of everything I've ever made. And it means a lot to a lot of people. So I'm going to make a reboot of it because you know the story, right? There, someone's making a reboot of Bluntman and Chronix. And oh, I'm James fa- to stop it. It's fantastic. What, what a good time to do it, too. With them rebooting so, Everything. Ma- so many other things. It's just and, what a great time. And also, you know, Kevin Smith, you know, being around our age group, right? He's with 46. Yeah. He might be 50. Yeah. I'm not sure. But he's but, but in that range. I mean, But he almost died of a heart attack. He was a big guy. And he, he kept getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And he almost died. And he just said, you know what? This script I wrote a few years ago that I, you know, he's, he's had a falling out with Hollywood. And, you know, kind of like it, you could parallel that with our falling out with the corporate mentality of a blockbuster, right? This, this is now in the public eye again. It's really important, I think, to us that he's making this movie. Um, oh, I, no. I, abs- I think absolutely. as a group going to see it, um, I mean, I just it's going to be wonderful. I just think when you have, he realizes the amount of people that these movies that he made just meant a lot to so many people. Um, it just resonated with them. And it was it was the amount of people that were, that, I mean, we worked at Blockbuster at the height of retail, Hi, uh, a, blo- more, a brick and mortar. It was people were going out and spending their money in brick and mortar stores. Remember, it was, just, it was everywhere. We're talking about a store that primarily sold candy, new movies and video games, and rented movies. A rental copy of a movie is four dollars and twenty five cents a movie by the end by the by the peak. I don't know why That's the I don't were. know why the number that always sticks in my head 319? is three eighty seven. Three eighty seven was a big one for a while. Three eighty seven was, was a new release 387 price. Three eighty seven and yeah. four twenty five. Three eighty seven went to yeah because three eighty seven was four fifty with tax. I think that's what it ended up. Three eighty seven was four fifty with tax. It was three fifty with tax. Sorry, we've been drinking. <laughs> anyway. I have not. Shut up. Uh, anyway, what was that? You you completely. But I was going to say we would do on a Friday, Saturday night six, seven grand. 
in business. Oh, uh, it was it was it was con- crazy, it was, but it was constant. It was it was, cr- but but Friday, on a Friday and Saturday that was like like weekdays were like three or four grand, and then on a Friday or Saturday you'd get in and you'd be like, we've already done five grand today in the day shift. Oh shit! I know that that's when, <laughs> but that's when you knew you were gonna get killed that night, and yeah. you would have how many the CSR pit when people came in, there'd be. Three or four registers. There were there. four registers total. One we of could them, populate. one of them, for the most part, we used for checking inventory. Yes. So that was like the CSR computer for checking to see and then what we, we had, had in stock. And then we had one computer in the manager's pit that we would use for. Um, uh, at, I mean, before it used to be to ring people up, but after a while, it was for giving out rewards memberships and yep. doing um, the movie pass. Yep. Yep. Things that might have taken a little bit of extra yeah. time. Or direct TV sales. Yeah. Because <laughs> we had to do that, apparently. We get like one a month. Yep. Because who's buying direct TV from a Blockbuster? Do you know what's really funny is the Dish Network ended up buying Blockbuster. They sold well, the name. Yeah. All along is um, Blockbuster should have sold to Netflix, huh? They almost did. No, they were going to... No, no. Here's the funniest oh, they thing. They were going to buy Netflix and yeah. they, they opted out because they said no one would ever move away from physical media. And Netflix was really only a physical media company at the time. Oh, no. And you and you look at Netflix and it was... Netflix cra- didn't have but a it was streaming cra- thing yet. It was crazy when you started to think about it and all of a sudden people... What do you mean they're going to get a movie delivered to their house? And... And, and then it was, what do you mean they're going to stream it and watch it at home? Yep. Yeah. How are you making money and advertising? What do you mean? What do you mean they don't need to come to our stores anymore? Yeah, it was very weird. Very yeah. weird. Um, um, but yeah, that that was that was a wild thing because, you know, we saw the writing on the wall. We got the video store magazines, um, Red Box. The picture of Red Box is this going to kill us? I know, and, and it did. You know, which is the crazy thing. Um, but again, it, you know, it maybe it had to die a little bit. I don't. I wish it didn't, because I'd still work there. No, but <laughs> but but I think the I think if they had gone in with Netflix, I think Blockbuster would still be around. I think we'd have stores. I don't think there'd be as many, but I think we'd have stores. Yeah, they just they just wouldn't have oversaturated. They'd be more like we a were, GameStop. They'd we be were more like we a were oversaturated. Stop. Way oversaturated. Way oversaturated. But again, at the time, people couldn't get enough. I know, because you would you would call you would, Friday and Saturday nights if. People wanted to see these blockbuster, you know, <laughs> pun movies. And people didn't but, have the the mindset to they, come in on Tuesday. But when they we thought nothing. Them. They thought nothing if we were out of it in Salem of going to Swampscott or Lynn to get it. Yeah. They thought nothing of it. Driving an extra 15, 20 minutes to get to the movie that they really wanted to see that night. Yeah. It just it happened all the time. All the time. And that's the thing is people don't plan. I think that's why the Netflix and Red Boxes really get people because they get the spontaneity. People would, sh- we had, you know, probably 50 50 spontaneous customers and customers that planned. Yeah. And your customers that planned would come in on the weekdays and get the movie because they knew it was out. They knew it okay. came out on Tuesday. But they were smart. They come in on they, Tuesday right. and grab the new movies. We'd You'd be, have such we'd regular be out. customers. We'd be out of the big stuff before Friday night ever hit. Yeah. That's, that's the. That's the thing, right? It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it was it was wild. But um, you know, what a you know, I, I wanna go into a couple more things, but I was gonna say, you know, I tell everyone and people would go, you know, how many people put their first retail job on their resume? I still put my blockbuster job on my resume. Absolutely. No, but you know what I mean? a lot of people go, Why would you put that? You're going in for an engineering job and I'm saying because I don't wanna be a freaking entry level engineer i want to be a manager and my blockbuster thing tells them that i went from 17 years old no job experience other than working at a christmas tree shop to 18 years old managing an entire store well and still keeping on the resume for me it it was a conversation starter you know i'd be interviewing for other positions in in retail and i actually hope that someone would bring up blockbuster well because it for everything we say negative about the company and i don't think of that as negative about individual people i just think the corporate mindset of the company was very outdated but that's a different conversation it is they people like you who got it and the people that trained you who got it you know what i mean you know you were you were you were going to be a district manager for a while there i mean that and, and i mean that because that's the type of you, you fell into a role of like, I'm actually freaking good at this and not good the way the corporate company said you had to be good, like good in the, no, this is forward thinking and different, you know, d- making sure the employees and the customers got the experience. But just actually caring, yeah. about the, caring about the customers that came in and, 
and you see those regulars or maybe you see someone for the first time that was coming into your store that maybe they had shopped the store in Lynn or Swampscott or whatnot. Oh, but, yeah, we got so many people from the Lynn store. That, when you started oh. having people from other towns coming to your store, you were doing something right. Right, exactly. And we, we had plenty of people telling us that we're not going to Lynn anymore. And and again, I don't mean that from a... Um, Lynn, Lynn was a hard store to manage anyway. You and I help, helped with inventories there. Yeah, Lynn, so. Lynn had the problem with having the most foot traffic of any store in the area. And Just also constant, constant. And also being in a rough location. Lynn, I mean, I live in Lynn, but, you know, the type of customers you'd get in Lynn and the type of theft that you definitely get in Lynn is, is completely different than any other store. But also because of that, you'd end up with people managing those stores that didn't care as much. That's true. Um, That's they, true. They're just there to make a buck. Whereas in Salem, we cared about the customer experience. And think about, you know, you make the list of Scott, Steve, me, Michelle. All of those people ended up managing different blockbusters on their own that were some of the best in the district. And they're all in the same district. You know, that, that ended up happening, right? Like it all, no, and, it all spawned out of Salem. We, we enjoyed and, what we were doing. We enjoyed what we were doing and the experiences that we had there. And it's weird to say that because people were going, oh, Chris, you don't enjoy, you know, the big... What? No, I'm good. Okay, go ahead. Um, this I can just keep talking. Um, let's say, you know, you don't, uh, you know, enjoy your current job. And it's like, um, my current job I love, you know, is the degree that I got. It's what I went to school for a long time for. But at the end of the day, that's my career. If I lose that... I'll fight for it every day because it's what keeps my family going. But I would rather if I could make the money that I make now or if I could, you know, keep a life for the people around me, I would do the blockbuster thing or the retail thing any given day because dealing with the individual, dealing with a person, making a person's life immediately better means more to me than running some calculation or making some drawing in the background ever would. The drawings and the calculations are personal. They're personal accomplishments for me. And being able to tell someone, yeah, I work for this company that makes, you know, this great stuff that makes the world better is great. But, you know, I like that that immediate recognition, that immediate knowledge that the person walking out the door is going to get something out of me that's going to make them happy. And I miss that every day. And, you know, maybe... Maybe that's why I do this show. Maybe the idea that this show can give the people the same kind of joy that doing that gave, give them an experience to remember something from a, a simpler time in their life of a time a while ago where they were a little bit more happy, a little bit more, um, stuff was a little bit more focused, a little bit more simple on a Friday or Saturday night where, you know, yeah, you you know, if it's as easy as clicking on a Netflix movie and grabbing, you know, a bite to eat from a local sub shop or a McDonald's or something and sitting down and my kids are asleep and I'm going to select a movie and we're going to watch it. You know what? Maybe you're going to select that movie and maybe you're just going to sit there and talk over it, you know? And that's fine. There's plenty of movies I like to watch that you can just talk over the whole time and have a good time. But Something about renting a movie, even if it was a bad movie, even if it was a movie you don't end up liking, it got your attention because you paid for it. You selected it. You made that decision. You brought it home. And I think uh, I think that all comes from the experience that we as employees of that place were able to give people. And, uh, you know, why why lose that? Why why is the world moved away from that? Um and, uh, you know, th that's really what I wanted to say about that. Now, um, we're getting to the point of needing to wrap up, but I wanted to bring up a thing. Do you remember the Chance Cube, the late fee Chance Cube? Oh, that yeah. we created around the time where Blockbuster did the no more late fees thing where they would just sell the entire fucking movie to you. Well, no, it came, it came out right around... We did it right around the time of episode one. Fandom. Oh, that's right. You're right. So and, that was... And in Fandom Metis, there was the Chance Cube, and... And Jeremy came to me during the week. I think it might have been a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that, you know, before the weekend. And we were joking around about them going away from late fees but um, and checking in movies at 12 o'clock and, and just changing to a different way of doing things. And half jokingly around, he said, hey, just like in Phantom Menace, let's do a chance cube. And let's make uh, one side be, you know, 
pay your late fees 100%, the next one half off your late fees, or even like one side was zero late fees. And I don't know what made me say yes, but it just sounded like a brilliant idea. And, and what and I the remember customers is loved it. they loved it, and we usually only used it with customers that we had a good rapport with. It's not like the random person that's pissed them off their late fee were going to do it, but the guy that's kind of a regular that we knew pretty well would go, you know, dude, I don't know, man. I don't think I have to pay that eight fifty for you know or $9 for that movie. You'd go, I'm sorry, sir. Your late fees are valid. And Scott would do that. No, but, it, the but it'd be cube. someone that, you know, it'd be a regular customer or maybe a random customer that the person that just came up to the register and maybe it was starting to die off, so a, someone was ringing, someone Someone might have been checking in movies. Someone was starting to clean up. Someone was stocking candy. All whatever it happened to be, and um, you would hear a random shout out. I'd be like, "Throw the chance cube." Yep. Throw the chance exactly. cube. Exactly. Throw the chance and cube. And because maybe you know the customer just we enjoyed them coming into the store and their banter they were having with us. That all of a sudden when we actually went to ring them up and it popped up that they had a late fee for two movies that were dropped off at. Uh, Two o'clock in the afternoon, two hours late, and you throw a chance cube to see if they actually had to pay their late fees. It was fantastic. And so we'll do a quick um, uh, a live play of this because Jeff Blass, who was an ex-employee right before you, had the best response. And he's going to be on the show soon because I've been talking – Jeff's like back talking to all of us again, which is kind of interesting. But Scott, so, so I'm Jeff. I've just come up. And and you're gonna say to me when I say oh, I don't think I have to pay that four fifty. What are you gonna say to me? What time did you drop it off? I dropped it off at uh, two in the afternoon. Uh, my system says that you are right. You did drop it off around two o'clock, but all our movies are due back by twelve noon. Okay, so so um, so what are we gonna do about this? Uh, you're gonna have to pay the late fees, or I don't know. You feeling lucky today? I'm feeling lucky. Let's throw the chance cube. Throw the chance cube. What does that mean? It means, just like in Star Wars Episode One, that I might have to pay this fee or I might not. Okay. Let's Roll the cube. Let's throw the chance cube. Ah, crap. Two times late fees. I'm sorry, I'm a Drydarian. Your silly you... Jedi mind tricks don't work on <laughs> You me. must pay for the value of the movie. <laughs> and that's really... The value that... of the movie, which we will mark up. What do, you, what do you mean this movie is worth twenty nine ninety five brand new? So the funny thing is, is when Jeff pulled out that I'm a Drydarian thing, I remember you going... Shit. Oh, yeah, your late fees aren't valid. <laughs> you just took it right off, and I thought that was hilarious because he pulled the full line from the movie off, and uh, that was hilarious. Either, either that or if you knew there was a chance that because we had this authority is... We did. We just had to explain it in like a receipt or something why we did the credit, basically. So if it was a valid reason you did it, obviously we'd come up with some random thing if we, if we did the chance cube, but... If you had a customer that came in and they were just nasty about it and you could just tell the way that they were interacting that there was a chance that they were going to be calling Woburn on Monday morning to complain about your store, you just took care of it. You just took care of it. Because you didn't want to deal with it. You didn't want to deal well, with and, the And it gave you that. It's like, that it's like again, at the end of the day, you wanted to make money for the company. But also, if it meant that you could take care of this and that person's going to come back in because you just took care of it. Of course you're going to take care of it. Exactly. And that that's and we did have that authority. We never got the hammer down on us for yeah. that so much. And again it, it came back to if your store is doing well and and the store looks good, they kind of just back up a little bit. But as we'll get into in the second half of our podcast, there are times when the store doing too well makes the company do weird things with your group of friends and split you guys up. That's going to be part of the Woburn conversation. That's true. They do. Um, a thing I'd like to end on before, uh, before we get into um, the, uh, the, the renting a blockbuster favorite movie recommendation por- portion of this is, do you remember the bathroom posters? Cause they were yours. You were, you were big. You remember this? We had the customer bathroom that you put up kick ass posters. Yeah. On. But you know what? You need to, that customer that came in and whether or not they were a regular or maybe there was someone that in the store, they needed to know that this particular blockbuster, we cared about movies. Right. And so we would always get um, – when you'd get your stuff in to prep for the next week, they would send us movie posters. And occasionally the ones would have to go in these little kind of rectangular kind of pods that sat in the window. And you'd have to change it out to what oh, the movie yeah. had to be. The big like but, marquee things with the lights. But I remember if those. there was a movie poster available for a movie that was out, coming out that week, or sometimes they would send old ones. 
uh, different posters that they had in their warehouse or whatnot, we would get them in. And if it was a good movie, we would throw a poster up in the bathroom. There was Fight Club. Yep. Yeah, there Pulp was Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Um, any kind of, you know, uh, Red Shoe Diaries. Did we ever get Red Shoe Diary posters? No, no. I, I think uh, so cer- certain have, employees that we had were actually hoping that we did. You guys had, um, have heard me talk about the Red Shoe Diaries on this show before, but I don't know if we've ever fully explained it. So Blockbuster was a Christian-owned company. Um, Sumner Redstone and the Paramount and Viacom folks, that was the idea. They didn't have a pornography section. But if a movie was like, you know, a Skinamax flick, which would get like, you know, the R rating under it and, you know, wasn't NC-17, they would have it. So you had this particular type of really boring and kind of shittily made um, pornography films that Blockbuster would rent, and the big one was the Red Shoe Diaries. They were like a Showtime Cinemax production, and there were like 19 of them. Uh, and they and they would sit on the new release wall, and you might get two copies in to start, and it would slowly go down to one, because you PVT'd it maybe yep. three months after it came out, and... Then we usually didn't wait the full year to put it back into the drama section. No, no. Uh, just because you had to make so much room for so many new movies and, that were coming and out. And you know what? The the people that were renting them, and again, there were a lot of people. Those they rented a lot. Were gonna well, look for them in the creepy for, in the creepy the most, favorite section anyway. Yeah, but for the <laughs> most part, it wasn't. It was the same people that were renting. It was the them same guy. All the time. Who would return yes. Little Mermaid in the box every once in a while. And you'd be like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> you remember him? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Disturbing. Disturbing. Yeah. And, you know, it. hopefully he doesn't live too close to a school. Yeah. That's screwed up. Unfortunately. That's screwed up. Yep. <laughs> but there's that. So, so again, I'll leave, before we get into our recommendations, because we'll do the talk about how we all ended up in Woburn. Um, on the next episode, which we're recording later today. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, what's your favorite, some of your favorite memories? We'll just go through them like boom, boom, boom from Salem. Uh, Outside of what we've already talked about. Uh, probably PVT pulls on oh, Mondays. God, yeah. um, I know I heard that. Tim was talking a lot about Especially that. But, but you, that you, definitely was a favorite time of mine. It and was, you'd, you'd end up coming in off shift. People, yeah, I'd, I'd come in, in my street clothes and help do the PVT pull. I thought it was fun. You know, I actually, um, just the enjoyment of a busy night and how fast it went by and, and spending time with friends. But it was different memories of... Always those favorite moments you had that just just struck you in a in a different way, and whether it was interaction with customers or maybe something that happened during your shift, um, just crazy. Yeah, it just every, every day was a new experience. It was, uh, you know, I'm thinking about the customers that would complain about all the uh, the plush toys. Oh my and god! So, yeah, so all the plush toys would be on this. Uh, fixture that they had it was the tan fixtures and we'd have to merchandise them all on that or on a little rack up front but the problem was that the corner in salem would get blasted by the sun all day long so all the so and fi- they didn't put shades up all so, the plushies so you'd have customers complaining that these faded toys, and we'd be like yeah 50 percent off just, just get it out of the building like we're sick of looking at it and you could make those decisions and those, but just those, you know what, if you're listening to this and you're in the North shore area and you bought stuff from the Salem store and you still have a faded plushie from 2000 to 2003 and you bought it there, let us know. That'd be a cool thing to see a picture of. Steve, is that you? I think Steve. that's Steve or Jeremy. Is it a My Little Pony? Because it's probably Jeremy. Did it, I can't even, re- I don't know why my brain, why I can't remember. Did we get an employee discount? We did. It's twenty percent. Yeah, I always knew about the free rentals, but I never actually bought that much. No, I just I just rented movies for free and, and, and PVTs because we got the deals and then the twenty percent. Uh, Remember that? Yes. Three for ten, three for six. You have the big signs that they'd have you put up in the section, and it'd be the ones that were like four for ten dollars, and it'd be like eighty five copies of this. And the crazy it'd be thing like is, four is movies worked. on the entire section. The craziest thing is it worked. That's the weirdest thing about previously viewed movies is I've, I've told people this before. It's the same thing GameStop has going. The company that made the movie doesn't make a freaking cent. 
when you previously view it. Because Blockbuster, the whole idea of rental originally was that you pay them like a hundred bucks for a movie and then you rent it and make up what you paid them for it and then you make all the profits. So then when you sell it, Paramount, Viacom, you know, Miramax don't make money off of that sale. Blockbuster makes money off of that sale. <laughs> but here's the deal. Blockbuster was owned by Viacom. And Blockbuster had deals with Paramount and Miramax and all these other places. So what we put on well, the shelf... And what we were charging What for, we put on the shelf, we weren't paying 20 bucks for. What we were charging for a new release when you could buy three movies for 10 bucks to watch... Or rent one movie for four dollars. Right. Or whatever so we would send people back to the shelf. You know, by the way, that thing you're renting is already available for previously viewed. And if you buy it in two more movies, you get it for ten bucks. Or you can get you can actually own this movie for two dollars more than what you're we, paying to rent. We remember the people that would come up with like the twelve strong when they were like four for ten stacks of previously I, viewed movies. I still have in my memory taking that DVD and, and putting it on that little black magnetic fixture yep. on the side of the cabinet and putting it down and pulling the yellow tab out. I still have Remember that the gray tab? in my memory. Remember the gray tab before the yellow tab? Yes. And the plastic case? The plastic cases. <laughs> and the, and the, Do you remember the clear the ones with the blue for Do you for remember movies. when they came out with the cart? I mean, uh, Nintendo before, 64. After, after they moved to DVD and said that it was wrong to make employees have to carry... The movies anymore? Yeah, so but we part. but we wanted to do that because because we had contests. We had contests. You, how many you could carry if you can make up a sentence with all the movies? <laughs> Remember that? You'd have two people. One started on the A side of the new release wall. One, one side on Z. Z, and who would make it to the middle first? Oh, it was so good. Yeah. VHS tapes were so much more fun to run. Well, you'd have the DVDs. You'd have those double movies with the elastics. Titanic, holding, Saving Private Ryan, with, with the elastics holding them together. Gods and generals. Gods. And <laughs> How remember how remember many that? copies of Gods and Generals we that? got? Gods and Generals was the sequel to um, uh, that Civil War movie. I forget which. I mean, they were both Civil War movies. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So that's that. I'm so intrigued. I'm intrigued. It, my, Gods my and Generals was good. Out. Gods and Generals was good. I think I did see it. Maybe I did. It was over long, but it was good. But anyway, um, so again, this concludes the first half of my conversation with Scott because the second half is when all the intrigue comes in of why I ended up at Woburn and why he ended up at Woburn. Um, but uh, now I want to create the virtual blockbuster because even though the folks out in Oregon still have a real blockbuster to work in, we have to pretend. Um, it's been, what, we're in 2019 now, so it's been, how long since you've worked at a blockbuster? Uh, probably like 17 years. Yeah, right? Yeah. So about, about the same for me. So, um... With that, I'm going to come up with a movie, and yep. Scott's going to be the employee, and he's going to recommend a movie that I rent along with it. And you know what? I'm going to uh, um, go, not a lob ball, but just a movie that makes me think of Scott, um, and I'm going to come up with Kill Bill, Volume 1, Quentin Tarantino. Well, the problem is, is, oh, no. Right. So no, was there a problem? What's the no, problem? No, no, no. So Kill Bill, the first thing I would recommend is, you know, it was such an intriguing cover box. Yes. You think of the person coming up and it's yes. just a huge katana on the front and just like kill, kill, kill. And you need to watch that movie. It's a good movie, but you need to see his old stuff first. Yeah. No, the, this is why so it, it, I you, would, you completely took the bait on why I picked that one and not an older one. You know, so and, and let's go. <laughs> my, my first inclination is to always recommend Pulp Fiction, but, Hell fucking but you yes. have to go Reservoir Dogs first. Yes. I think um, you should rent them both. At the same time. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. I think they're a good there double feature. I think I might own like four copies of it. So why, um, so even though Kill Bill is like, you know, the quintessential Tarantino movie, why would you recommend to see the old stuff? Like, what do I get? Out of seeing like Pulp Fiction, like, you see that take Kill Bill. Just the character development, just it's uh, the revitalization of careers. You know, John Travolta getting restarted, and you know, being such an '80s icon for these kind of cheesy ass movies that he did, like Look Who's Talking, and you know, stuff like that. But it was a revitalization. His character in it, for as you know, as kind of cliche as it was, with the slicked hair and the and and whatnot just his interaction with samuel jackson to me is 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 unbelievable i just think of i still can name the movie from beginning to end uh, it, it it i gotta say is one of the most iconic 90s films ever made well you you look at that year and shawshank redemption but you look at the year it, it was it was it probably it probably deserved to win best picture 
Uh, but it was up against Shawshank Redemption and, and, and Forrest and, Gump. And Forrest Gump. And what so three how do, great movies. How do you not give Forrest Gump best picture? <laughs> but it's three it, it fantastic resonates. movies. But Forrest Gump resonates with everyone. Pulp Fiction doesn't resonate with everyone. A lot of people. But I got to say, I haven't people found a person. People get too turned off. I haven't by found it. a person who's sat down and watched Pulp Fiction, though, that hasn't come out of it appreciating it. Absolutely. You people might be turned off by the oh the swearing I, and the violence. Oh, and, and the, the you know and, and, and the gimp yeah. and the rape and the yeah. yeah but it, I mean, it's a hard movie. It pushed it's bound, a fucking it, hard. It movie. pushed boundaries, but it was one of those first movies that, um, if you think about it, it was actually the first movie that showed kind of the opioid opioid epidemic yes. that was going on in this this country. Is 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 this stuff really happening? And it looked at it in a sympathetic light. It didn't go and like it didn't go and shit on the people. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the people that are having a problem with it are helped by exactly. things that actually would help them, like an and, adrenaline shot. And you know exactly. I mean? and Instead he, of and like Tarantino look, would yeah. use humor around those important situations. You know, I'm thinking about uh Butch driving the car back to see uh uh what was his girlfriend's name? I forget his girlfriend. Uh, but name. anyways, uh, what when happened he, to Zed? Zed's dead. Yeah, baby. Zed's dead. <laughs> but but those moments, even there, that you can see him having moments of clarity, what he had just done. Yes, that he knew that he had to do it, but you know he killed a guy, and you know he kind of screwed someone, and now he knows his life is on the run and and running away from things. But you could see those moments that he was grappling with the situation that was at hand. Right, and those are those moments when that's what I want out of movies. I want movies that challenge you. I want movies that are going to challenge me. I want movies that I'm going to think deeply about. Uh, Yes, there's a time and there's a place for Transformers. There's a time and there's a place. But I I want that movie to have that experience and resonate in me. Oh, and it makes you question how you would deal with the situation. And that's Bruce Bruce Willis, you know, for being the everyman in every movie he's in. Bruce Willis almost always plays the everyman. It's such perfect casting from Tarantino to cast him in the role he did. But those, but those, those movies when you're talking yeah. about, we're talking about Tarantino and his early films. Um, those are te- those tend to be the types of movies that I recommended when I was younger, and the movies I recommend now is the movies that have that dialogue impact on me, even in a comedic way. I mean, I think about how many times I I, I quote Office Space and how many times I quote Old School and and how many times I I, I quote just random, uh, just comedic things that hit me or a a mob movie or whatnot. Speaking of Old School, as a tiny quick tangent, because this is a movie-related podcast, have you seen the trailer from Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie? I I have. That's the guy that directed Old School. Really? And Hangover. You know what? And and with it's... with with um Martin Scorsese producing. So the, this movie looks the, awesome. The thing is, is seeing that <laughs> seeing that Joker character um, transform over the years from a kind of um, just kind of silly um, entity that was causing havoc, and to a what. I think that Joker character really is is just dark and disturbing layered. and layered. And you look at Heath Ledger and what it did to him. I and, love, I and love that the I Joaquin can't wait. Phoenix I can't version. wait. I, and I'm glad you brought that up. That movie. I can't wait to see what. Joaquin I love that the right. Joaquin Phoenix's version of the Joker, even if they're trying to make it a separate thing, has so many homages to what Heath Ledger did. Oh, he's brilliant though. Joaquin they're both Phoenix brilliant. brilliant. They're both brilliant. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. I. I can't wait. I just can't believe Todd Phillips, the guy that made The Hangover in Old School, has the gall and the ability to make such a great looking movie. Like I don't think he makes bad movies. I mean, I like all of his movies, but I, I look at this and go, "Holy shit! Like, what have you done?" Well, like, and, and looks to see amazing. with how much success he's had with comedies, I can't wait to see what he does. I, I think with any genius in in comedy there's always another there's side. a dark side there's comedy always, always has a dark but there's side. always what what made them come up with that comedic kind of movies that made them get out of whatever world they're in and what they might be thinking about and it, it's gonna be kind of brilliant to see what's gonna happen i can't wait i'm really looking forward to that so um what's your what movie are you coming up with uh so i'm coming up to the register and i am renting um Let's see. You know what? I'm going to rent because I'm going to rent Braveheart. I've, I Holy or shit. or or I've seen Braveheart and that type of movie that's kind of like a history piece 
uh, war type movie, what what are you recommending? You know, okay, that, that kind. So, oh man, that that opens up so many types of things. But you know what? If you've seen Braveheart, I imagine that you. Um, so you're not bringing up Braveheart. You're just saying I want to see a movie like Braveheart. No, so. Imagine a customer coming up to you. And they're renting and, Braveheart again, but they want something like it. Yeah, something like it that maybe just something that history piece. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's be. awesome. So so there's actually, I'm going to recommend something from two opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm going to recommend because it's newer and because some people don't like the older films, I think. I'm going to recommend Gladiator hmm. because I think Gladiator is an underappreciated film. I think Gladiator was shit on when it won Best Picture. Um, for being kind of more simple and, but I think uh, it's just because of the big. big I think Gladiator has stood the test of time. I think that could be one I of the agree. best films of Ridley Scott's career. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this guy made Alien. You know, but but I think Gladiator is fantastic. But I'm going to recommend you because you seem to be a history buff. Maybe you're a, um, maybe you're a uh, uh, William Shakespeare buff. There was a Akira Kurosawa film, which we actually have in our favorite section, which was a version but using samurai of um uh William Shakespeare thing of Hamlet mm. not Hamlet brain shutting off Macbeth I'm sorry Macbeth okay. called Throne of Blood where a samurai leader um they do the whole lady macbeth thing with the you know a person not born of of man and woman could come and they literally do the entire story of macbeth but they do it with samurai and it is just a fantastic movie. Big, epic, sweeping battle sequences. Nice. And you know what? I'm going to give that. But I'm also going to give, even though it's more silly and over the top, I always have to recommend people The Patriot when they recommend Braveheart. I love that movie. And my reason I for recommending... I love no, that movie. My reason for recommending The Patriot is, well, it's not very historically accurate... It is so goddamn wonderfully over the top. And seeing Mel Gibson with a John Williams Star Wars style score get out there and beat the shit out of British people in the Revolutionary and War. And who doesn't want to see that American Revolutionary oh, it's just It's so kind of badass. Yes. And you know what? I'll take that populism and like pro-America thing over any of the garbage we're dealing with right now. <laughs> I'd rather take Ooh. Revolutionary War let, all day let, long, right? Let's, let's not go into that. Fuck that, the British. Yeah, yeah, let, let's not go into that. <laughs> I agree. Yes. But anyway, so that's that. So, um, Scott, um, after our recommendations, do you have anything you want to tell the people out there to check out? Or, um, hell, just tell them to come to Ocean State Job Lot. Whatever you want to do. Ah, uh, no. It's... Although we do have great deals on clothes. They do have great deals. A lot deals. of good stuff. A lot of good snacks. A lot of good... It's just a lot going on in our stores. Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, I, you need to check out, uh, if you have not seen it and who hasn't is anything Tom Segura related. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. I've just been big into stand up. uh, just watching a ton of stand up, and I can't get enough of him. He's, uh, he's just a complete hoot. Oh, that's it's awesome. Just, yeah, I, that was, that's out of left field. I like it is that. out of left field. No, I like it, that. Know, but he's just got just a great approach on life and. Just uh, laughing at yourself. and I like that. And that That's kind of awesome. Yeah. So uh, this has been Scott. Stay tuned for Scott and I to record another episode right after this, which you'll hear a couple weeks after this. Um, but as always, I'm Chris Chipman, the Chippa on Twitter. Um, I run the Chipman Brothers Tangent with my brother Movie Bob, Creating Geeks with my wife Sarah, the Shooting the Shit with Chippa, which is just like the Chipman Brothers Tangent, but I let my brother not be there and I interview other people you might be interested in. And... One of my favorites right now, the Talkbuster podcast, which you're listening to right now. And as always, thank you for making it a Talkbuster night. Please be kind, rewind. And Scott. Wow, what a difference. Blockbuster video. Blockbuster video. Return your tape on time. Yes. Fucking rewind your tapes and return them on time, please. And don't scratch them up and don't cover them in maple syrup. <laughs>